Hi, it's Sandy Parker, and welcome to Crafting for Almost Everyone. I've been watching people use Yupo paper and play around with alcohol inks, alcohol markers, doing all kinds of things, and I wondered, what if I try it on glossy paper, gl glossy cardstock? Now, this is the cheap stuff that you get from the Dollar Tree. This is not, you know, some high-end expensive stuff that I bought. So I played with it a little bit already, and these are some of the results I got. Now I can layer more on these uh, blue and green layers. I can do a lot more like the orange, but I thought we would play and make some backgrounds together. And I'll show you how I did what I did. Now again, I'm using the inexpensive paper, but because I wanted to play along like everybody else, I do have this Ranger Adirondack Alcohol Ink Gloss Finish Paper that's specific for this technique, and we'll use that after I've made my big mess with this. I thought I would show you how I cut my paper. This is the glossy cardstock. It comes in a regular size sheet, like your copy paper would be. So the first way I cut it is on the long side, which is your 11 inch length. I cut it in half at five and a half inches. I've had a lot of people asking me about how to cut paper so it fits perfectly on cards, and this is how you do it. Then you're going to take your half of your card and you're going to move it to four and a quarter inches. This is why I always make these lines, hopefully you can see that, on my um, bar of my trimmer because it makes it easy for me to instantly know where to make my cuts. So that's half the sheet, and then I put in another one at four and a quarter and I cut it in half and that gives me four pieces of cardstock that will make a card that is considered an A2 size card. It is a five and a half across by four and a quarter high. Now this is the size your card would be so you'll probably want to cut this down a little bit once you layer it on a card base but that's the size we're shooting for right now and I wanted to make one more of these that was like a sunset look. I thought I would start out with like a yellow then an orange then a purple or the uh, or the reverse so the bottom is going to be this, um, I'm using the Adirondack alcohol inks. In case I didn't say that before, this is sunshine yellow. And so if you're going to go for the look of a sunset, I'm hoping I'm in camera, but I'm trying to get this flat and my, my scrap paper is looking gross. Um, I'm going to do a line, just drips of yellow across the bottom like that. And again, this is just glossy cardstock. This is not, or glossy, uh, excuse me, not cardstock, photo paper. So it's not anything expensive. You get this at the Dollar Tree. And then I'm going to use my little um, handmade. What I did is I took one of the Tim Holtz uh, tools and I just got uh, cheap, very cheap felt and cut it into pieces that would fit like that and then we're ready to go so I'm just going to kind of move a little bit of this around the, the stuff that's still wet I'm going to use some of that um, it's called alcohol blending solution but you could use regular alcohol to do this instead of buying this but um, I bought it so I'm using it did not know at the time that I could have just used alcohol regular alcohol but these are the things you learn right Okay, I'm going to put a little bit more down there, and I know it'll move a lot more because I have that blending solution, but I kind of want a consistent color along the bottom edge. And then I'm going to use my little dauber again, and I'm trying to only use a portion of my dauber because I want to use it for all the colors I'm going to be putting on here. Like I said, I'm going to use an orange and a purple. And this might be the only one that has any kind of, um, like, real um, definition. I'm going to put another line close to the edge of this. I'm going to use the blending solution on the back. I'll, I'm going to lay it down before I put down my orange. That will give me the ability to move this because I'm using this cheap cardstock or, yeah, glossy um, photo paper it doesn't move like the expensive 
stuff does. So the this um, alcohol blending solution helps you to get your colors to move where you want them. Loving it. And then after I'm done, I think what I'm going to do is kind of put some splotches of these. I'm going to go pretty far up on this because I have a lot of the orange, so I might as well blend it around a lot more. And then you can wipe excess off. Then the last step is purple, and I'm going to be using purple twilight. Oh, these are all just perfect for sunset colors. Who would have guessed? Right now it kind of looks like a candy corn. i got to get rid of that look, right? And I'm going to have to put more of that, um, the blending solution under it. Make sure you have really good ventilation. I mean, get your windows open when you do this because, holy cow, the last time I played with this, I ended up with, um, I was woozy and I had a headache. And I'm just saying, just be very careful about it because it, it these are alcohol. And the smell is fierce. All right. So the background is dry, so now what I want to do is I just want to put some spots around. Just kind of dribble my purples in. And then I'm going to dribble the oranges on top of those. And make it kind of more abstract but still have maybe the look of a sunset okay and then I'm gonna squirt a little bit of this around and then after I do that then I'm gonna run them off and the direction I'm gonna run them in is um, this way I can explain it like that so that I can get the purples not to ruin my oranges and my yellows. And then I'll run the oranges back and forth a little bit. Let's see if I can get a little bit more of the blending solution on the orange section. Okay, now I'm just going to take my dauber and just kind of daub around and I'm going to kind of twist it as I do it because I want a little bit of motion if I can get it and it also helps you if you have a section that you just can't seem to get covered this photo paper just doesn't sometimes accept the the alcohol and so uh, you'll have like spots that are kind of um, matte looking so if you have that happen this works to fix that okay so that's my last one and I'll go on to making our cards so what I did when I did my first ones after I kind of got a, a, an idea of what to do I have this alcohol blending solution it's kind of like an alcohol mark you know one of the colorless blender markers it just kind of created a background um, for me so then what I did is I took one of these foam dauber things and I smeared it around with some color it's just my way of creating a background and the reason I'm getting those little stripes is because I made my own pieces of felt and that piece was too short so let me get a better piece that fits my whole image and I'm going to um, put a little bit more on here and then I'll put some color on here. Oh, and that hair of mine does not need to be there. So let me just kind of smear this around so that my whole background is covered and I'm going to eliminate that hair. Drive me crazy. Okay. So then I'm going to put uh, some sunshine yellow and I'm just going to do some drops. Again, this is how I did it before. I just threw a few drops around like that. My paper wasn't as curly as this is because it was smaller and I'm not crazy about the curl. And I'm just going to kind of pounce this around and move my color a little bit. Then I'm going to take some meadow green. And I'm going to just put a dollop here and a dollop there. 
I wish I could get that to straighten out. I could probably put some tape on it, but then I'd have to get the tape off, and you know how that goes for me. I'd end up with more tape on me than I would on my background. So then I'm going to get some clover, which is a blue-green color. Now, one thing I will tell you is you should be in a pretty well ventilated area when you do this because this stuff does put off a very strong alcohol smell. And um, I remember a video that Patty Tolly Parrish put up a long time ago where she seemed like she was inhaling too many f of the fumes and she said, I think I'm starting to get a little bit uh, woozy from this. And I thought, note to self, remember that if you're playing with these alcohol inks. Okay, so those are the ones I've already done. I didn't, I only did one new one. So now I'm going to take the real paper and we're going to see what we get out of this. I have no idea what to expect because as I said, this is my first time with it. So I think I'm going to go with completely different colors so that I end up with um, a look that's more distinctive with these. I'm going to start out with butterscotch if I can get it open. Don't use your teeth, although I just did. I do just some drops. Now my other one probably would have had the same impact with um, the, the circles if I didn't have the curls to the paper, but these ones have that curl. This is a current color so it should be a purple. Now I'm on the shiny side of this, but um, right away I can tell that one of the differences is that you end up getting these cool edges that look kind of like um, you blew them with a straw. And I've been seeing people blow their um, alcohol inks with straws, but um, I've never I've never tried that myself. So let's see, what other color do we want to try? I think I want to try this color green. I didn't think that current would be that brown of a color, but it is, so we're going with it. And this is much runnier. I don't know if you can tell that than the other colors were. This really looks 70s to me, if you remember the 70s at all. Yeah, a little bit too much in that section, so it's moving. But I don't think it'll move for very long. Okay, I'm going to do one more yellow color, I think. Or should I do an orange? I'm going to do sunset orange to offset our other yellowy color. We'll really make it look 70s. There's nothing that says 70s more than yellow, orange, and that ugly green. If you know what I mean. Okay. I did not put any of that um, uh, the uh, this stuff on it at all. So I don't know what would happen if I did. I could um, try it, so we'll give it a little bit of a whirl right in that section right there and see what it does. On this paper, it kind of does what the um, what a blender does on um, when you're using it on alcohol markers. It lightens it and kind of makes the it blurs the edges. 
I'm going to try and put it around the edges and see if I can get my colors to kind of blur on the edge. You know, to fill the edges in. See if we can get it to do that. The orange is doing it a little bit. I don't know if you can tell that or not. Let's see if I can put a little bit. Oh, who cares? I'm just squirting it now. Let's see what that purpley does. If you've never played with alcohol inks, they are addicting. And I made um, Christmas ornaments with them a couple years ago and did a video. It was my very first year of, whoa, of doing YouTube. And I um, did a video with them. And I got so addicted that I ended up, I don't know how many videos I made of me doing those. But it was so funny because every every time I thought, oh, okay, I'm, I'm done. I'm not going to do any more. Then I ended up doing more and more and more, and I had such a good time with them. So um, if you do play with these, just remember they are addicting. I'm going to put a little of this watermelon just to see what it does. That's fun. On that corner right there. So I have to be honest, I don't see a huge difference. I mean, it's it's definitely different than the other paper but I wouldn't say it's different enough that it would make me feel that I needed to buy this paper over the other paper um, now this one is completely dry I, I mean it's not it's not a significant difference in my opinion but um, again I, I don't you know I, I'm not by any means an expert at this I just love making a mess <laughs> if you know me you know that's true Put a little bit more of this on this one because I I just don't feel like I made enough of a mess of this one okay and I'm gonna squirt a little of this on this paper I do think this stuff reacts a little bit different between the two you know when you're when you're squirting it on the photo paper I don't think it does the same thing as it does with the other paper. So maybe that's the difference is that you get a different, it's a different reaction. Um, you can see this one, it didn't lighten the colors at all, but on the other, on the paper that it, you're supposed to use it on, it definitely lightened the colors. And so maybe that's the difference. Hold on, I gotta do this edge to get the, there. I just want to get that dark onto the edge of the paper. So that's the beginning. I'm going to do another video where I turn some of these into card and see what we can do with it. I thought it would be fun to just play with it and see if we had a big difference. If we did, then I would say let's only use the, you know, the good stuff, but I'm going to play with all of it and probably mostly play with the cardstock because I have a lot or the photo paper because I have a lot of photo paper I might as well play with it right so I hope you give this a thumbs up and subscribe tell one friend about me on social media I'd really love that and thanks so much for watching bye bye